All right, you guys, so next step is creating our handles. So we have constructed our cylinder. We've blended the foot onto the bottom, and we've let that stiffen up to leather hard. So now our entire piece is leather hard. We want to keep it that way. So again, reminder, if you want to just simply wrap your cylinder, particularly around the lip, with um, a damp paper towel, uh, make sure it doesn't dry out. Set that aside, keep it in a bag until you complete your handles and your handles have turned leather hard, and then we'll be ready to attach them both together when they're both leather hard. Okay. All right, so a couple ways to create your handles. I know you guys watched um, a couple methods in the previous video. So one was that carrot slam method where you roll out a coil um, but it's tapered. So it's thicker on one side, thinner on the other side. So spending a little bit more time on one side, angling your hands and rolling out a tapered coil that looks like a carrot. That's why they call it carrot slam. So carrot shaped, and then basically we slam it gently on our table and that flattens out the back side. Okay. Um, we don't want this to be a super, super thick uh, coil because we'll have shrinkage issues, cracking issues. So it flattens kind of one side and makes it easier to hold onto and grip. So it's flattened one side and then you can take simply take your fingers and smooth out, compress the surface of the clay. Um, if you happen to have a sponge, you could do that with a damp sponge. But otherwise, I just rolled this clay out. It's very nice and plastic. So you can just simply use your fingers, just like you saw in the video, um, to shape it. So if you wanted it to be a little bit more flat, if you want to keep it round, uh, totally up to you. Normally, we don't want to have a really thick handle. Okay, that'll be usually a little bit more awkward to grip. So normally, we do want to thin it just a little bit. So taking my thumb and pulling that clay down and then reshaping it. Okay. And then from there, we can shape it into a lot of different handles. So I'll show you that in a second. So that's one option of actually making the handle strip. The other option is using the slab method. Of course, we are very familiar with that. Um, so what you can do, kind of the same process as your foot, is make a long strip roll out a nice long slab and from this you can cut out your handle so that will make the handle a little bit thinner a little bit more delicate so it's just really up to you what you prefer if you want to have one that has a little bit more thickness and roundness to it okay or if you wanted it to be a little bit more thin and flat so it's up to you so same kind of concept we would find a straight edge um, and go ahead and cut out your handle shape. So depending on the size of your mug will make a difference on how thin or wide you want it. So for example, your basic mugs, if you have a smaller size mug, obviously you would want to have a smaller, thinner handle so it matches the size of your mug. If you have something that's a little bit bigger, you would want to have your handle a little bit thicker and a little bit wider to match the size. So before you even start, kind of take a look at your mug, decide how thick you want it, what size you want it, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and cut this out. So one option is just to do a straight, even slab. So you're like making a coil, but it's the same thickness all the way up and down. So you would just simply take your ruler, straight edge, whatever it is that you have, and go ahead and cut off some of that excess. And um, we'll just do a thin one just to show you guys the difference. Okay, so there we have just a thin 
slab that would fit probably a smaller size mug, okay? So that is one option. The other option is particularly if you have a larger size mug or maybe you want something a little bit more decorative. So perhaps a handle that's a little bit wider on the top and then it gets smaller on the bottom. So same concept as our carrot slam uh, method where it's wider at the top, thinner at the bottom, just a little bit more decorative. Um, particularly if you have a larger size mug, having something a little bit wider at the top um, will kind of strengthen that a little bit. It'll help carry the weight instead of having a huge mug with this really teeny tiny handle. Um, so the other option is then with your slab of clay, instead of just going vertically down, you can create a taper. So an angle of your slab going from thick to thin. Okay, so and then you can form it so it's thick to thin. So those are your options. Um, so whichever one you choose is totally fine. You do, you do just want to make sure that you don't have any sharp corners. So if you decide to cut it out of your slab before you actually form your handle, you want to take your fingers and smooth out those corners. If you have sharp corners and you're holding a mug, um, those corners tend to dig into your hand um, and make it quite uncomfortable and also is more difficult to clean. So you want to go ahead and smooth out, round out those corners on the top as well as on the bottom, okay? And then of course, smooth out any surface texture, compress the surface. If you wanted to have texture on your handle, you could definitely do that at this point. Go ahead and stamp it in now that it's flat. Um, otherwise, just smooth it out, round those corners, flip it over, smooth it out, round the corners, and now you're ready to shape it, whichever one you choose. Okay, so um, some options for handle shapes. First of all, you want to think about how do you use your mug? How do you like to hold your mug? And everyone is totally different. Some people like to hold their mug from the outside. Some people like to hold their mug from the inside. Do you like to fit all fingers in? Do you like to put two fingers, three fingers? Do you like to have a finger sitting on top? How do you like to hold your mug? For me, if I was holding this one on the outside, this is a little bit awkward for me. So um, you wanna choose a handle style that's going to fit your hand comfortably, so fit your, your size comfortably, and then also how you plan on holding it. So a mug for me, I like to put a few fingers in and have a space on the top. So um, think about the size, think about the placement. Do you wanna have more space on the top to fit more um, fingers on top? Totally up to you, okay? Um, but I have a few examples of different styles that you can go for. But basically what you're gonna do is you just take your slab and curl it into the shape that you want. So if you wanted to have something more decorative like this, if you wanted to have a basic looped handle, if you wanted to have something that's even more decorative, something that spirals out, I will tell you those are a little bit more uh, tricky um, but I've got some set aside here just to show you guys. All right, so these are some different options that you guys have. So here's one that was tapered. So it's thick on the top and thin on the bottom. I know in the video you did see one where it was thin on the top and thick on the bottom. Um, that's not quite as functional because the weight, the top, needs to have a little bit more strength than the bottom, okay? The top of the connection takes a little bit more pressure. So I would highly encourage you um, to have it a little bit thicker on top. And then that was curled into a spiral. So you can either lay them flat on their side or stick it onto your bat and let it dry upright. You can always um, poke some paper towels in the middle if it's sinking. If your clay is still really plastic and it's not holding its shape, um, you could get some napkin, paper towel, sponge, put it on under here 
to hold your clay up until the clay has stiffened to leather hard and keeps its shape. Okay, um, so here's that standard one. And so then either option is you could trim it right where it's going to touch the base. So we'll trim that later after it gets leather hard, or you could let it loop all the way around like that and maybe trim this part off and um, have a whole standard size loop. Um, and then just one other option is taking the slab. And what I did here is I just took my finger and I squished the clay around the finger so that it is a little bit more decorative. Okay. Um, and so when you're holding it, you've got that more of a, a curvature. So if you're the type of person who likes to hold the outside of your mug, um, this curvature tends to fit your curved fingers a little bit more comfortably. So um, totally up to you. So whether you do a slab that's going to be even thickness all the way, or if you have a slab that's going to be uh, tapered thickness throughout, then again, you can curve it to the size you want. But just double check, double check. If you want to fit your entire hand in, can you fit your entire hand in there? Do you make, need to make it bigger, smaller? Um, you know, trim off some of this extra and uh, make sure it's going to be comfortable for what you want. What do you want in a mug? So I just wanted to show you some examples. This one is obviously a lot more decorative, has some texture on it, has a couple of these decorative marks to kind of grip your fingers on. Um, this one is a little bit more angular. So if you like to have angle or a flat place to put your thumb on the top, um, that would be a good option. Otherwise, we have our standard versus kind of our looped handles. So whichever one you like the best, okay? But just make sure that, again, all of your edges are going to be nice and rounded. You don't want to have any hard square edges, anything that would be sharp and uncomfortable. Um, but simply choose your favorite one. I would recommend making at least two, maybe two different styles or even two of the same one, just in case the one doesn't really turn out as well. Um, so you can either store them sideways like this, or like I said, you can squish your handle onto your bat and place this down and let it stiffen up vertically. And then you can kind of see the shape without anything getting distorted. So the goal is then we let these turn leather hard so that when we pick them up, they don't just lose their entire shape, right? Now we have no handle. So we want to be able to pick them up um, and then keep their shape and then next time when they're both leather hard, we'll talk about trimming them, measuring them, and attaching them onto our mug. Okay, so go ahead and either let these air dry for just a few minutes. Um, if you're ready to move on to the next step, you can just let these air dry. And then as soon as they are leather hard, we can move on. If you are not, if you're packing up for the day, make sure that you cover this with plastic and then check on them frequently so that they don't get past leather hard. Okay.